Welcome to episode five of On Pace. This week's show has a little bit of everything, no matter what event area you might be interested in in Wichita State Track and Field, as well as a visit from one of the former Shocker greats. The final regular season cross country meet of the season was the Bradley Pink Classic in Peoria, Illinois. The Shocker men finished ninth and the women finished 15th. WSU was led by Zach Penrod and Nathan Wickerin on the men's side, who finished 17th and 19th respectively, while Winnie Kosky led the women with a 28th place finish. The men's team stayed competitive despite several runners either being sick or sitting out the race to get ready for the upcoming conference meet. For many of the women, it was the first 6,000 meter race of their career, and Coach Hunter sounded pleased with how the results went. They're prepared as, as best they can be for the 6,000 meter distance. We've done the work, that's not a question. Uh, at, at Bradley, um, Winnie was being very aggressive, especially in the middle of the race. She was pushing very hard, um, doing everything she was supposed to do. She just didn't make it the whole way. And it's not like she had a bad race, she had a great race. Um, it just didn't quite end up the way that she had hoped at the very end. And she was disappointed, but I wasn't. I was very happy with the way she performed. I know as a runner, if, if you do what she did and you come back the next time and do the same thing, you will make it the next time. The conference championship is always one of the most important dates on the schedule. But this year is even more special because this weekend's cross country meet will be the first ever American conference championship for any sport at Wichita State. Here's a preview of the historic competition in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, at this point in the year, we have to select our nine men and nine women. On the women's side, because of our uh, number of red shirts and things like that, it was pretty easy to select our top nine. So it's gonna be a really young group of girls and, and that's okay. I mean, the experience they're gonna get, gain from being out here is just gonna be tremendous. It's gonna really uh, move us forward in the future. And for every year that we go to the American Athletic Conference, these girls are going to have that experience now. And it's going to really help them grow as uh, student athletes as they go through our program. So I, I'm extremely excited for the girls team and how they get this opportunity. Um, looking forward to seeing how they do against some of the, the strong teams that are in an American Athletic Conference. Um, and I think they'll do well. You know, I really do. Uh, hopefully they will uh, perform at a good, strong level, not be intimidated. Um, you know, so far this year, they haven't shown me any sign of intimidation from anybody. They just run, which makes them a, a really good group of young, young ladies. So excited for them. On the men's side, I, I think it's really no different than on the women's side. I mean, my real number one objective is just to have good, strong performance. I mean, if, if we can come together as a team on the men's side and the women's side, um, we're going to be happy. And, you know, however we, you know, perform as far as in the team placings and things like that, that's going to be a little bit secondary, although I, I understand that, yes, we want to win. Yes, we want to be successful as a team and we want to place as high as possible. But I also understand that if we can just perform at a level that we're capable of and who we know we are, especially on the men's squad, that we are going to do well. We are going to place well as a team. While the cross-country teams are getting ready for their championship run, the Wichita State Throwers were competing in the annual Shocker Track Club Throws Pentathlon. Eleven of our athletes participated in the unique multi-event scored competition with junior Megan Williams winning the women's overall title and former Shocker Skylar Arneson winning for the men. Here's a look at how that competition went. We're here with Coach Hetzendorf. Can you just talk to us about what this meet is? Well, this is a weight pentathlon, which is all five throwing events we do at the and subway track and field level. We've been training for the pent for probably the next, last three weeks. We've all been doing events that we never do, helping each other out a lot. You're about to see it a lot. But it was a lot of hard work. Discus and hammer are pretty new to me. I've never really thrown them before, and uh, just just trying to get used to it and trying to get a mark out there. I've been scratching a lot. <laughs> I competed in these in college in the fall. It's just kind of a fun thing we did with some other universities and other athletes, masters, post collegiates that kind of thing. So, you know, I enjoyed it when I was an athlete. Um, so I tried to bring it, start it here, and we started it a few years ago. I've competed here for about three or four years now, and I've enjoyed it every time, so I just keep coming back. It's been a great event for the throwers. It gives us a chance to see where we're at in the fall and have a little fun. I'm having a great time. All these guys here, it's really fun. And just get ready for start of the year, start of indoor season, but it's just really a fun thing we do to, with the throwing events. 
The rest of the track and field team had an unofficial competition of their own as they headed into fall break. Every year, the sprinters, hurdlers, jumpers, and multi venters test themselves in a variety of skills to see how ready they are for the more specific training that lies ahead. Here's a look at some of those testing results. Over the course of my career, dating all the way back to when I used to do this as, a, as an assistant coach in charge of the sprints and hurdles and multi-events at the University of Nebraska, on, and then during my time at Kent State when I was coaching Coach Wise, 435, 435. and then in my 17 years here, my 18th year now, 430. We've always done a fall testing activity like this. Go! All right, be aggressive. So we do a series of test efforts, standing long jump. Cover some ground. Standing triple jump. Good. We've always done a 30 meter fly. Go, go, go! We've always done a 30 meter acceleration. We've always tested a 300 meter sprint. We've always tested the overhead back, the clean in the weight room. Go! They also have fun with it because they they are able to look back at how they did a year ago and they're able to see how they're progressing uh, in terms of their explosiveness and their leg speed. Part of the reason we do this also is to see if there are, you know, possibilities of some other events that people might be good at. We saw that with Audacia Moore certainly years ago. She was a great sprinter, and we began seeing evidence that she could probably do the long jump and the triple jump as a result of the things that she did in these test efforts. And sure enough, she began being a top three finisher in the Missouri Valley Conference uh, in both the long jump and the triple jump. There you go. The most meaningful thing from my perspective is to see year to year progress. I look better. And we kind of see where the athletes are at. So we are here with Kellen Taylor, formerly Kellen Johnson, for all you Shocker fans, and uh, going to have a chance to catch up with her and see how she's doing. And she's got a big race coming up, so we thought we would uh, connect with Kellen and, and see how everything's going. So Kellen, thanks for joining us, and it's sure exciting to see you doing great things out in the world. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, you're currently living and training somewhere else, so tell us how life has changed since Wichita State. Oh man, it's changed quite a bit. Um, right out of college, um, I had a little girl, so she was a friend. Um, so we moved out to Blankstaff, Arizona when she was about nine months old, and we've kind of been there ever since. So we've been there about six and a half years. Um, living and training. And so, what are you doing for a living to make ends meet besides running? Um, well, actually, running is making ends meet, which is nice. Um, I'm pretty fortunate to be a part of a good team. I'm at Hope in Northern Arizona Elite, um, sponsored by Hope at Home and and a good job of supporting your athletes. So I am very fortunate to not have to have another job at the moment. But I am currently um, training to be a firefighter. So that's kind of in the works, and hopefully something that I'll be able to do consecutively with Aaron. That's awesome. Um, so, how has having a family? been and has it been an overall good thing or has it been a struggle with running how do you balance all those things in life and still try to reach your goals as a world-class runner it's been awful i would never recommend it um <laughs> no it's great um it's it's something that i think is a little bit different for me because my whole entire professional career i have had a family um, it was something that i had to introduce like a couple years down the road um, so it's kind of all that I've ever known, and it's kind of all that my daughter knows. She knows that I go away on weekends every once in a while, that, you know, when I'm running, I'm training, like, that's my job, which is pretty unconventional for a normal kid, but for her, it's normal. Um, and I think that it's good overall. It gives me, I like to stay busy. I like to have a lot of things going on. Um, so while it might overwhelm some people, I think that it's really good because it kind of gets your mind off of running all this time. Um, you know, I don't think it's good to think about your races and, you know, what can go wrong um, too much. You know, I think that it's good to have something else to think about and other things to focus on. That's great. You know, you got a big race coming up, the New York City Marathon, here in a few weeks. You know, how has preparation been and what are some of your goals or expectations for that race? You know, it's been actually really, really good. Um, I've had three three marathon build-ups now. Um, and they all pretty good, but I would say that this is probably my best one, which is really encouraging. Um, you know, I've had 
I think seven, seven solid weeks of training, um, and roughly probably teetered between 110 and 120 mile weeks during those seven weeks, um, which is the highest that I had ever done. And pretty much everything kind of went off without a hitch, nailed everything, and you know, now all that's left is the race, you know, that, that little thing. So hopefully that goes well. And so any, is there any specific goals, time, or placing that you're looking forward to, or are you just going to go and compete and see how things shake out? Um, you know, it's really tough to say. Um, it's such a big race, um, and there's a lot of really, really talented, qualified people that are in the race. Um, I'd love to say that I'm going to go out there and just, like, run with the leaders, but the likelihood of me going out and running with the leaders is not very high. Um, they're just kind of on a different level. Um, but I definitely want to go out there and compete. And if I go out there and run what I know that I'm capable of running, that I could end up in a top five, hopefully, which would be a very, very good day. Another former shocker, Alephine Tulliamuk, will be in that race. You guys, Can you guys team up and mm -hmm. kind of take on the competition a little bit? Two shockers in there mm -hmm. battling against everybody yeah, else? Hopefully. You know, that would be great. Um, I don't know what her goals are right now, but, you know, I, I would think that we're probably kind of on a similar uh, – playing field um but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes I'm excited to see her and see what she does out there awesome um you know thinking back a little bit about Wichita State and your time here and you were uh, all American multiple times and a lot of school records and did some really really great things here what are some of your fondest memories of Wichita State and then I've also got a request for where were some of your favorite places to run here in Wichita um <laughs> Um, some of my fondest memories at Wichita were probably just uh, dealing with the team in general, uh, just kind of the bond of the team overall. Um, I think that that's always a really important aspect of running because you want to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying it, then you don't really want to do it. Um, so I think that was probably like my biggest takeaway. Um, and then in terms of places to run, um, you know, I, I love the dirt roads. People are always like, oh, you're in Kansas. And I'm like, it's great there. I love Kansas. Um, you know, the road just go, the roads go forever. You don't need a watch. Um, you know, it's mile by mile. Simple. Great. So, and anywhere outside of What was that? Sorry about that. Anywhere outside of town. Where anywhere outside of the roads. Yeah, exactly. So, that's awesome. Um, you know, finally, there's been a lot of Wichita State women go on and have successful post-collegiate careers like yourself. We asked Alephine this question, too, when she was on the show. What, what, what is it about Wichita State that was good for you, or what do you think is the reason why there's been a lot of success for women distance runners post-collegiately? Um, well, you know, I think Wichita is a very unique program. Um, you know, you guys aren't usually getting, like, the superstars. You're getting good athletes, but you're not usually getting the superstars. Um, and I think that they're, these kids are being brought into a program that's not overwhelmingly large. I mean, Wichita is not a huge school, but it's still a Division One school, um, which I really liked. Um, you didn't, I didn't like get thrown into a sea of hundreds and hundreds of people. I was thrown into like a pool of 20 or 30 people. Um, so I think everybody that ends up going there kind of gets the attention that they need and they deserve, um, and nobody gets overlooked. Um, I think that that helps to kind of develop the athletes overall, um, you know, and keep some interested and excited about the sport. Um, I think that if you're going into a program where you just kind of like fade into the background, it can kind of lose its luster and you don't really enjoy it anymore. Well, speaking of development, you have developed beautifully over the years, and we are certainly proud of you and your accomplishments here. And you're still, you know, one of the people that, that we talk about all the time to kids on our team. So everybody's watching, and, and we're really proud of you. And good luck to you and Alephine in, in New York, and we'll surely be watching that race as well. Great, thank you. Thanks, Colin. It's conference cross-country week all across the nation, so let's take a look at where some of the local teams are competing in their conference championships, as well as many of the local road races in the area.